Hi, I'm Madison Dean, and welcome back to our fourth show of sagas. This month's theme is love. We'll be talking about certain people's love stories and the love people have for their hobbies. A new history teacher's love goes way beyond his job. He attempts to engage and educate his students through his love of history. I'm a nerd uh, and a history nerd and this is what I do. In the United States, Hitler comes to power, she believes in the Nazis, she goes over to Germany during Hitler's reign. He's so contagious of what he does, like he honestly just enjoys and loves what he does. History is more than just learning about when it happened, it's why it happened, it's the backstory, it's who made these decisions, why these people were making the decisions, and then the consequences that go with it. Good, bad, um, indifferent, whatever it is, Every time we do anything, we're making a decision that's going to impact something else down the line. And history is all about that. Meet Mr. McAllister, a history teacher at SHS. Oh, his like attitude about it is just so contagious. And he's so, he like includes everyone like in the class with it. He makes it so interactive and so just fun to learn with what we are doing. And so it's just really fun to be around a teacher that's so enthusiastic about what he does. Uh, the teaching side has always been more of a, something that I've always wanted to do and really got it start here at Seaman High School. There, and I don't know if the program's still alive, but at one point seniors could go out to the elementaries and work with a, an, an elementary teacher and in essence be a student teacher on a, on a very simple simple scale and um, work with elementary students. So that, uh, that really encouraged me to become a, a teacher. Mr. McAllister believes artifacts bring alive another side of history not told in textbooks. There's always that, that physical um, aspect of history that we don't tend to see in textbooks. And so I've always tried to bring in something that, that's real, that you could touch, that's tangible. Anywhere I could find things, uh, friends, um, students, whoever's bringing things in. I don't buy stuff and I don't get stuff just to get it. It has to be something that's, that's meaningful, it's going to have uh, some significance. Most of these are not replicas. They're the real item. Um, the fan is, is from the time period. The gas-powered iron is from the time period. These are all real. My favorite uh, artifact has to be my uh, Civil War cartridge uh, label, I mean, or buckle. Uh, this is not a belt buckle. It goes on uh, the cartridge box where you had your bullets. So this was with an average soldier. And this average soldier happened to be at Gettysburg. And this average soldier happened to be in, in and around Devil's Den. And so I don't know his story. We'll never know his story. It was found near a creek in that area near Spangler Spring and down by Devil's Den. Um, but he was there. And it was lost. And how it fell off, what happened, we'll never know. But I think this, this this little piece of Civil War history, because it was carried by just an average guy, an average kid, uh, probably about your age, who fought and we don't know if he died, we don't know what happened to him, but he was there. He witnessed that moment, um, probably one of the greatest moments, not just in U.S. history, but world history. It's a, it's a pivotal moment. Uh, and he was there and he witnessed it and I have a piece of that. So I always keep that one very close. Uh, I don't let that one out of my sight. The purpose of me doing this is not to n necessarily show off. I do history 24-7. This is all I do. That's who I am. Mr. McAllister will continue to collect more artifacts to further the education of his students. Washburn Tech Institution has started a new program 
cosmetology. One semen student, in particular, found an interest in it. He has always had a passion for hair and decided to give the school a try. Dawson Hegert's love for hair has grown since a very young age. I was in like fifth, sixth grade when I discovered braiding with my sister. And then middle school, I kind of got more into it through YouTube and stuff and discovered it could be a career. Washburn Tech's cosmetology school was a great opportunity and fit for Dawson. A friend of mine told me first, I think, because she had discovered from a family member or something, so then me and my mom looked into it, and I knew at that point that that's what I wanted to do, so we got enrolled. Dawson's friends are very pleased with his skills and abilities. I just show him a picture on Pinterest, and he makes it even better than the picture. Like, he knows exactly what I want, and he does exactly what I want, and he does it even better. Dawson admires many hairstylists, but one in particular sticks out the most. Jen Atkin is probably my biggest person who's a celebrity stylist that does, like, Kardashians and people of that sort, but I like her style. He did my hair for junior prom, and then ever since then, I just always ask him to do my hair. He did it for homecoming assembly, he did it for the homecoming parade. He's done it ever since junior prom. I highly recommend Dawson because he does exactly what you want. Just, he's amazing, he does a really good job. Dawson is graduating in the near future, and he would like to leave Topeka to meet his ultimate goal. I should graduate by like the beginning of June, hopefully but we'll see when it comes closer to that time. I'll start out with salons probably. I wanna to try to at least go to Kansas City to get out of Topeka and work a little different clientele, but the end goal is California eventually. After graduating from Washburn Tech, Dawson plans on starting in Kansas City and his ultimate goal is to make it in California. This year, shoppers spent $19.6 billion on Valentine's Day. What makes people spend this kind of money, and what do teens think love is all about? February is a month of love. I sat down with two couples to figure out what love means to them. Zach and Madison have been dating for three months and met here at Seaman High School. Ray Conaway and her boyfriend Mathis met in Germany on her exchange trip. They've been dating for a year and are now in a long distance relationship. I think love is just when two people really connect on a spiritual level. I think a person's definition is very dynamic um, and it kind of depends on what they're experiencing in their life at that moment. But as of right now, I think love is finding someone that you're willing to set aside your own personal desires for uh, to support and care about. My definition of love would be um, when you're with them, you just like you can't get enough of like hanging out with them. Or even when you're separated, you still want to like you yearn to be with them and you yearn for like their attention, regardless of who else is around. Have you ever been in love? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. We met through theater in the musical last year. Mutual friends. Yeah. And also honors chemistry. She made me ask her out. It first started off as just like, oh, this is a cute girl. And then once we got to know each other, it made me feel comfortable hanging around her. Um, and she was someone I genuinely wanted to spend time with. And it was cool. Um, we met when I was in Germany, so it was around October and he saw me for the first time and he asked his friends who I was and one of them said I was an exchange student and they thought from America but they weren't 100% sure. And so he was like, oh, okay, well I want to meet her. So then for like a solid month he was just like kind of stalking me but not like really because I never noticed because I just wanted to go to school and get my homework and try to understand German. Um, yeah, and then I went to badminton with my two best friends and he played badminton and then he asked for my number from them and then we started texting. It was on his grandpa's birthday actually and we just got back to his house and we were just sitting on the couch and I referred to him as my boyfriend and he was just like, 
you've never called me that before. And I'm like, well, it's true, isn't it? And he's just like, yeah. And <laughs> just like <laughs> an unofficial, official start. She is the most indecisive person I've ever met in my entire life. He is beyond stubborn and he refuses to listen to anything I say. <laughs> if you gave good advice, I'd listen. Okay. What is your favorite thing about your significant other? It's easy to tell that Madison genuinely cares. Um, and she's always willing to listen. Whether it's you're having a bad day or um, you just want to vent or you have a personal issue with her, if you're willing to talk about it with her, she's willing to listen. Uh, Zach is probably the most uplifting person, no matter what, even if it's like the worst day of his life, he will go out of his way to make your day better. My favorite thing about him is probably his bright green eyes or his smile. It's kind of like, it's kind of crooked, but like not. I don't know. It's really cute. <laughs> Do you think the definition of love has changed from generations before us to now? I feel like love these days would be like, I feel like so many more kids our age consider love to be um, watching Netflix or just talking to them and I don't know. Love is definitely different than what our parents grew up with, I think. It's less one-on-one -on -one and more over the phone, more um, texting. These couples have advice on how to keep a relationship going. Don't stress over a high school relationship. I think that's good advice because we are in high school and I think we both accept that the odds are against us. If we do end up splitting up, it's not going to be as major if we both have the mindset of we're 17 and 18. Life isn't real to us. <laughs> um, as opposed to we're 17 and 18. If we don't get married now, then what are we going to do? We're so madly in love. That's how Romeo and Juliet happened. Some factors that really help is definitely the trust. You have to know that they're not going to do anything bad to you and they're not going to just go out and be with other people because they're desperate for attention. So it's definitely communication on top of the trust. When I went into this relationship with him, I knew it was give him everything or give him nothing. And so I took the everything because he's really important to me. Everyone has their own opinion of what love means. Only time will tell what will happen to these couples. There's a lot of different opinions on love. Some say there is love at first sight, and others say love is in the eye of the beholder. Everyone has their own opinion on love. Speaking of love, everybody remembers their first high school love. We have a story about high school love, but it does not involve high schoolers. Oh my gosh, they're the best couple. Yeah, all jokes aside, um, it's one of those things that you wouldn't have thought that it would have worked out until all of a sudden, when they're together, it seems like the most obvious thing that could have ever happened. The first time I met Mr. Riley was when I was a student in his French class my freshman year of high school. And the freshman center wasn't open then, so I used to have to ride the bus over in the morning to just take that one class, and then I'd go back to the middle school. Um, then after I graduated, I came back to teach here, and I think I kind of had to remind him who I was. I think he had forgotten who I was by that point, um, even though I had taken three and a half years of French with him. And so we became colleagues, and that's how we met the second time. We met in high school. I was a teacher, and she was a student in my class, my French one class, which makes me sound really creepy. They're both really creative people. Um, and they're both really fun people. Mr. Riley knows all this like underground, like alternative, um, like this whole world of stuff like that, like like obscure bands and TV shows and, and stuff like that. And then Mrs. Riley is like super smart and um, and like like cute and fun and I don't know. She's my buddy. Anyway, um, and so 
I don't know, together it's a pretty cool combination because they're able to kind of like mesh into a lot of different situations. We were colleagues, so I had come back to work um, to teach English at Seaman, and we were colleagues and we would eat lunch together um, with a big group of people. We have a lunch bunch, and we would eat together and we just became friends. When she came back, um, you know, over a couple of years, we got to know each other, um, eating lunch together with uh, a lot of the language teachers and that kind of stuff, and just. Um, you know, kind of getting to know her as a person and just the more I knew about her, the more um, the more interesting she was to me. Uh, the more we talked, the more we realized that we liked each other as more than friends. And so um, after Snowball one year, we went on a date and the rest is history. The day before graduation or the day of graduation, um, Mrs. Riley, um, was with me at the mall and I was working at Zales at the time and so we started to play around with the engagement rings um, but what I knew is that Mr. Riley was trying to find out what kind of engagement ring she liked and so um, I was watching to see which ones she was pointing out and in, I ended up um, selling him her engagement ring and then he, a couple months later, we all went to Europe together um, and we, let's see, oh, I shared a room with her. Ugh, that was so hard. I was scared to death that I was gonna talk in my sleep. And she would say things like, I don't think we'll ever be engaged. I think we'll just like be together and stuff like that. And of course I knew he was gonna propose to her. Um, and so, um, it was only, I think it was like the second or third day we were there, so it was pretty early into the trip, so I didn't have to wait too long. Um, Mr. Riley had brought the engagement ring to Europe, and it was on Bastille Day, which is like the, like the, it's not like Independence Day in France, but it's like their country celebration day. And we were at this um, kind of art district and this huge church that overlooks all of Paris. And um, we made all the students go like shopping and we got rid of them and we set up some people with cameras and video. And of course, Mrs. Riley had no no clue in the world that this was going to happen and Mr. Riley um, I think he just like walked up to her or no he like walked her over to the steps and anyway he got down on his knee and proposed. The fact that he's very multifaceted he's not just one thing yes he's a French teacher but he also plays drums in a punk rock band and he cooks well enough to be a professional chef if that's what he wanted to do and he's an amazing father and he can always find a way to make me laugh he's hilarious and he's so incredibly smart he keeps me on my toes. We just kind of gradually got to know each other um, as co-workers and became friends and um, uh, I kind of felt at some point in time I felt the need to say something and um, uh, felt like I was taking a big risk because I didn't feel like I'd be somebody she was interested in um, but um, you know I told her and she said that she felt the same way about me and um, things just kind of picked up speed from there um, <laughs> and uh, we or I proposed to her um, in uh, Paris on the Europe trip. So it was in Paris, but it was on a school trip, so that makes it a little less romantic. Um, um, but uh, yeah, it just kind of, you know, like I said, the more I got to know about her, the more interested I was about in her, and things just kind of built. I lucked out. Yeah. You're about to propose to the woman you love more than anything. How do you feel right now? A little bit nervous, but um, looking forward to it. It's been about three months <laughs> putting this And some thing. crazy dreams, Amy. <laughs> she made Christmas. Oh, uh, we've been putting it together for a long time. It's been very difficult. I'm not good at keeping secrets. Um, so I'm very happy to be doing this. Mr. and Mrs. Riley have been married for five years now. They ride to school and eat lunch together every day. 
Now I'll be leaving you with my commentary about sending inappropriate pictures over social media. High school is one of the most stressful times in a teenager's life. Trying to balance schoolwork, extracurricular activities, and maintaining a social life is extremely difficult. On top of all of that, there lies the stress of trying to fit in. Students may feel pressure to do things that they may not be comfortable with, all because they want to fit in somewhere and feel wanted. One of the most controversial examples of this is sending nude photographs over social media. Platforms such as Snapchat almost seem to be formatted as an app designed to send nudes. Snapchat is an app where you can send pictures with text to your friends. Once the picture is opened, it will delete within a certain amount of seconds. So unless the recipient of the Snapchat screenshots the picture, you will never see that photo again. Some pressure others into sending nude photographs using apps such as Snapchat. You may be thinking, why don't they just say no? The explanation to this is that sometimes you can't say no. Someone may blackmail you or threaten you in order to receive these nudes. Other times, the person being asked to send these nudes just want to fit in, and they want to be liked, so they'll send them anyway. I'm here to say that nobody should ever feel this way. If somebody is asking you for these kinds of photographs, they are more than likely just using you. If you ever feel uncomfortable, block the individual that is pursuing you, and if you ever feel harassed, make sure that you screenshot the messages and inform a trusted adult. High school is a really tough time for teenagers, but that doesn't mean you should have to put yourself out there in a way that you are not comfortable with. Remember, everything you do on social media will follow you for the rest of your life, so just be smart. Thanks for watching our fourth show of sagas. We'll see you next month, and remember, love is all around us.